You are standing outside a large warehouse in Middlesbrough. There is a sign saying the auxiliary and a glowing green neon sign saying we walked out of the wilderness. There are large glass doors at the front of the building. You open the door and walk inside. You find yourself standing in a very large, high-roofed white gallery space. In the room are artworks displayed on the walls and in the centre of the space. You walk up to the first wall, which displays four large one metre square artworks. They are like some kind of strange camouflage gorilla jigsaws. You can make out images when you look close up reflecting the original starting point of these images. The first one is created from an image of the artist's home in Sheffield. You can see bits of rooftops and gardens and solar panels all broken up and jumbled all over the artwork. The second one is harder to define. It started off as an upturned white plastic chair on a beach close to the UN Green Line border in Cyprus. It has been fragmented and split apart in a random yet symmetrical manner. The third piece is more pale and sparse. The starting point was a walk along a beach where Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, Raquel Welsh and Bridget Bardot used to swim in the early 1970s, looking at the derelict facade of high-rise buildings. You can't see much of that, but it's intriguing and it pulls you into it. The last piece has larger fragments and is more symmetrical. This is the artist's bed and bedroom which he shares with his partner. The bed has been with him a long time, an old sturdy Victorian sleigh bed, a bit messy, not being tidied for a while, a weekday morning when they're rushing for clothes and have no time. You step back and look at all four of the artworks and think for a moment. You turn around and see a long wooden box with a glass top resting on metal stands. Inside there are tarot cards. They are beautifully drawn and their subjects are very intriguing. There are a real mix of people you consider heroes and organisations you think of as villains juxtaposed against one another. You walk up and look more closely at the tarot cards. All of them are very different. Some are dark and nasty and the kind of future that we could very much do with avoiding but seem to be cascading towards. Some of them are bright and colourful and welcoming and you find yourself being propelled into them willingly. The subject of these cards are John Zerzan, LSD, the abolition of work, drones, quantum computing and AI, Kurt Zadek Lewin, electronic surveillance, global finance markets, anarcho-primitivism, post-left anarchism, and an end to industrial civilization, cybernetics, internet governance, Timmy Leary's eight-circuit model of human consciousness, Al Jazari, transhumanism, Timmy Leary himself, Google, Richard Stallman, Martin Heidegger, William Blake, the Committee for the Liquidation or Subversion of Computers, Grassroots Internet Communities, DARPA and DAR Wars, Dream Sharing, Gerard Wynne Stanley, Utopia, Nano Bio Info Cogno Convergence, Robert Oppenheimer, John von Neumann, ARPANET, One World Government, Global Data, Ada Lovelace, the Unabomber, Margaret Mead and Gregory Bateson who represent the lovers, Ken Casey and the Merry Pranksters, Electronic Social Engineering, United States Cyber Command, the World Federation for Mental Health, H.P. Lovecraft, H.G. Wells, Aldous Huxley, Edwin Black, MKUltra, the Macy Conferences, Infowars, Cyberwar and Netwar, Post-World War II Early Computers, Global Secret Services, Nikola Tesla, Lawrence Jarak, Alan Turin, Soviet Ternary Computers, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, White Hat Hackers, Black Hat Hackers and Grey Hat Hackers, William Gibson and the world which is represented by World War I, World War II and the World War Web. As you walk from the table to the back wall you see a framed photograph. The right hand side has been burnt away 
The left hand side shows a small white steamship with smoke coming out of its funnel. It's on a lock. In the background is a mountain and perhaps pine trees. The boat is cutting through the water, powered by its own wood, which is being burned to propel it across the lock. On the next wall is a huge black and white, really complicated diagram which shows how an AI works. At the top is a human brain which leads into all kinds of networks and pathways it's hard to make sense of. You look at it a little discombobulated, trying to work out what it is, what all these connections are. There's a periodic table, computer chips, all kinds of strange interlinking components, the human brain feeding through mostly immaterial labour and knowledge and experience through voice commands into the Amazon Echo Dot Wi-Fi routers, ISPs, submarine cable infrastructures, platform services, assemblers, manufacturers, smelters and refiners, mines, elements and geological processes, issues of child labour, slave labour, of waste, waste collection, Cargo ships, hazardous material shipping, waste recovery, waste disposal, waste, 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 all the way down to deep time and earth, our home, for as long as it can sustain us. With your head still reeling from this data overload, you turn and look at the next wall. You become aware of a small CCTV camera which seems to be pointing right at you, and also two long, tall, thin planks of wood against the wall with a human leaning on them, slumped, inert. You wonder why they are doing this and what they are doing and how long they can be there and if it hurts and whether this is for your entertainment, whether you are watching or whether the CCTV is watching you and whether you are now part of this artwork. What can it mean and why? Slightly unnerved, you walk into the centre of the room. There is a large, freestanding sculpture of an Amazon arrow, orange with a black outline with a large white border. Instead of pointing up like the Amazon arrow, it's pointing down into the ground. On top of the arrow, there is a device displaying images. You walk forward and get sucked into the images on the screen. Walking out of the main room, on your left you see a side gallery. The back wall is filled with red drapes with a large screen in front of them. This is displaying a film in the style of Marina Abramovitz, featuring the artist Hannah Cook, who has sat across from Abramovitz, silently investigating, while she breastfeeds her little baby Ada. Next, you walk into the dimly lit bar. There is a screen set up playing a film showing strangely beautiful and pleasing structures, some cylinders of wood or copper balanced on a thin metal ladder which is raised off the ground at one end and touching it at the other, and a strange kettle on wheels blasting out steam running along a track, a steam-powered kettle machine, and a weird kind of lit up lozenge shape which is going along the same track on wheels, and a tyre with a ramp at one end and a ladder balanced on that and more tyres and a table balanced on a table on a trestle. It's all very industrial but also strangely entrancing and perfectly balanced with an innate beauty all of its own. <laughs>